attack on two Saudi oil tankers and a Norwegian flagged vessel. The incident happens during a time of increasing tensions between the U.S. and Iran. We are joined now by Mark Martin in the CBN newsroom with more. Mark. That's right, Heather. Sunday's alleged attack in which the two Saudi oil tankers and the Norwegian flagged vessel were damaged happened in the Gulf of Oman off the coast of the United Arab Emirates. Yet. Now, details of what exactly happened remain unclear and made the region, which is extremely important for global energy supplies, less safe for shippers. Now, following the attack, which Gulf officials described as sabotage, the U.S. issued a new warning to sailors and the UAE's regional allies condemned the alleged attack. The UAE says four ships were actually targeted off one of its port cities. Gulf officials declined to say who they believe is behind the alleged attack, but the U.S. has alerted ships that Iran or its proxies could be targeting maritime traffic in the area. The United States also has deployed an aircraft carrier and B-52 bombers to the Persian Gulf in response to alleged threats from Iran. Tensions are mounting between the U.S. and Iran over the unraveling nuclear deal with world powers. Uh, U.S. officials told the Associated Press that American naval investigators were helping the UAE with their investigation. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo departed from Joint Base Andrews in Maryland late Sunday night. He changed the schedule for his latest trip to Europe, deciding to stop in Brussels instead of Moscow to talk about Iran and other issues with leaders in Europe. Tensions increased after President Donald Trump withdrew the U.S. from the 2015 nuclear deal between world powers and Iran. He also restored sanctions that have taken their toll on Iran's economy. Iran warned last week that it would start enriching uranium at higher levels in 60 days if world leaders did not come up with new terms for the deal. Saudi Arabia's energy minister said the alleged attack did not lead to any casualties or oil spill. He did say it had an effect on the security of oil supplies to consumers all over the world. Iran's foreign ministry requested more clarification about what exactly happened with the vessels. He also warned against any conspiracy or orchestrated by ill-wishers. Heather, back to you. Thanks, Mark. And our senior international correspondent, George Thomas, is following developments in the region. And George, talk a little bit about where this happened and what it means for global energy and insecurity there. Yeah, very significant. So let's go to the map to give you a sort of a perspective of where this actually uh, happened. You look at it right there, the location of the sabotage. Uh, the officials uh, from the UAE, that's the United Arab Emirates, say that this alleged attack on these four vessels took place off the coast of the UAE in a port city called Fujura. Now, this is about 85 miles. Keep the map right there. It's about 85 miles from the Strait of Hormuz. Why is this important? Because every day, Heather, as the as oil comes out of Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran, Kuwait, Omar, they have to go around that Strait of Hormuz. And about 16 million barrels of oil pass through that tiny choke, choke point. And that represents about 40% of the crude that is traded around the world. So uh, attacks on oil vessels are very, very rare in this part of the region. And so when this does happen, it is obviously of big concern. Uh, looking at the indications, looking at the actual uh, uh, blast there on the back end of the hall, nothing very significant. I mean, officials from Saudi Arabia and the UAE say there was no oil spill, no structural damage, significant damage to the vessel. But clearly, I mean, perhaps maybe a small IED may have been placed. Obviously, it raises big questions about the vessels that are coming out of that part of the region. But again, Again, we're not sure where this is going to go, but we will probably get more information in the hours ahead. Yeah, what, is, what do you think this means going forward as, as tensions ratchet up? What are we talking yeah. about militarily-wise? Well, clearly, you know, we have, as Mark, as my colleague mentioned, you know, we have an aircraft carrier, we have B-52s. Obviously, both sides are not uh, backing down. The, the, the pressure continues, not just the economic, but clearly now the military pressure on the Islamic regime. Mm -hmm. And talk a little bit about the economic challenges for the country right now with, uh, with U.S. action recently and, and how, how much of this is just stemming from that. Yeah, absolutely. Very, very significant. In fact, the president of Iran, Hassan uh, Rouhani, on Sunday uh, went before the public and said to the Iranians, listen, you need to prepare for the times of between 1980 and 1988. If you remember to, uh, uh, of your history, that was a time that Iran and Iraq were at war. But what is very 
significant about this time period, uh, Heather, is that back during the 80s, uh, there weren't crippling sanctions against Iran's banks, oil industry, manufacturing, the industrial, uh, there were sanctions on arms and so forth. But I think personally that the economic dire straits that they are facing today is worse than they have, that, than what they've ever experienced today. The one, U one U.S. dollar was trading on the uh, currency board in downtown Tehran. One dollar fetched you about 160,000 Iranian rial. In comparison, last year, you would get about 50,000 rial on the black market. Huge inflation. And as you can imagine, people's uh, pay, in pay uh, salary is not increasing as this inflation explodes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. I want to ask you, too, um, kind of unrelated but sure. interesting, the Iranian government has ordered men not to look at women. Yes. What is this all about? Well, you know, in a way, maybe, okay, it's not related to the to the attacks on the oil uh, on the oil uh, tankers, but it is related to the ongoing frustration that so many Iranians are facing today. Last month, Muslims around the world marked the beginning of the holy month of Ramadan. And so the Iranian regime is telling Muslims in Iran, listen, as a way, they're encouraging women, please continue to veil yourself. In fact, try to put more uh, uh, restrictions on yourself. Try to be completely veiled. And then they told men, please don't look at men directly. Uh, they also said, you're not allowed to play music in your car. You're not supposed to eat or drink during the time of, of uh, prayer and fasting. But again, all of this coming at a time when Iranians are increasingly frustrated. In fact, just about an hour ago, I sat down with a leader who does work inside of Iran. He's from Iran, uh, but now does work with the underground church. And I asked him, what about this idea of men not looking at women? What's this all about? Here's what he said. I think the main reason is that uh, the government is really frightened because the, especially the young generation are fleeing from Islam and they just want to do it with pressure that saying that, okay, we have these rules and you have to follow it. And uh, people are really tired all, with all the economic um, pressures, politic pressures, and the, the conflicts between the uh, government of Iran and the United States. I think the best way to pray for my people is to find Jesus because all these Islamic rules, all these pressures, uh, there is just one key. If the heart uh, will change, everything will change. Hmm. And obviously he says Jesus is the answer. We need to pray for the nation of Iran. Incidentally, today in downtown Tehran at a major university, there were protests by both men and women against the regime about the tighter restrictions on wearing the hijab and this whole idea of men not looking at women. Not sure how that they're, they're going to enforce that, but again, it's in this convulsion of all that's taking place in Iran that the frustrations are getting higher and higher by oh, the day. Oh, wow. Well, really a, a great time to pray. George Thomas, exactly. thanks for your insights.